engine is finally going back together. Yay! Um, doing uh, all my checks. I've mic'd the crank. Uh, do yourself a favor. Go through your book, um, whatever you got for specs, and write down kind of in order um, the things you'll be checking in the, uh, and the associated uh, torques. Um, uh, write down your stock. And in my case, I had this crank, um, was turned, uh, 10 and 10 rods and mains. So write down your, uh, stock reading, then subtract your, uh, um, undersize off, uh, away from that, and then put your new range there. So do your, uh, get your torque, uh, cause you'll need that if you're going to be using plastic age, which I highly recommend. Um, uh, and your, uh, what else do we got? Your, uh, do the same thing for your rods. You got the, I got the torques. Um, I've got my piston and ring and gaps. Um, then I write down, um, I do a check with a, with a micrometer. And I take the reading in two different uh, perspectives. I take it, um, let's see, what was I checking last? I guess the, yeah, the, the mains. Um, I take it, um, um, actually, I take it first. Find, whatever method you do, just kind of stick to it. I, I do a, uh, I do it horizontal and then I do it, uh, vertical 90 degrees um, away and it kind of helps me see if it's you know egg-shaped elliptical or whatever um, so then I you know starting with the uh, uh, it do, I, I'll do all the mains first uh, so the mic is you know open to about the same range and you're just tweaking it a thousandths or so either either way then do the rods um, you know, you've got two, two rods for every, every journal and I have them, uh, down in the way that they will, uh, be connected in the, in the engine, um, label everything, um, bottom, uh, and, uh, and top because it's just too easy to get yourself con confused and, you know, make, uh, one, <laughs> one, four or one eight or, or whatever. And then it's confusing. If you switch back between general motors and, uh, Ford, uh, you know, it's a, it's a different firing order and cylinder number. Um, got the shells, uh, in the block and, and in the caps, um, I still, I'm going to wipe them down with, uh, lacquer thinner, uh, to get that white coating off. And since I'll be using plastic gauge, um, I'll set the, uh, the crank in there dry without the seal. And speaking of seals, um, uh, I was disappointed to find, and now I, I've probably been through this before. Uh, the full, the rebuild set of Felpro gaskets, they put, still put this old school prone to leak. Uh, well, I don't know if it's necessarily prone, but you're increasing the chances of having a leak with the two piece, as opposed to just using the one piece, which this thing built 20 years ago and 200,000 miles had no leaks out of the, uh, out of the end, out of the rear. Um, so I am going to attempt to use the green plastic gauge first. Uh, again, this is a refresh just because I happen to have the rings and the bearings and pistons and all that such. And this is just kind of a budget rebuild. So, um, yeah, get your, you know, get a, get a one piece. What's really annoying is the fact that the gasket set was, um, I don't know, like we'll call it 80 bucks. This one piece seal that they could have put in there <laughs> was 25. Um, so really, really annoying. 
Oh, meant to mention, uh, I still have the same repair manual from when I rebuilt this 20 years ago, April of 2002. So here were all my clearances when it was machined out to uh, 40 thousandths over and 10 and 10 on the uh and the rods and veins and everything was you know right in there right where it sh uh, right where it should have been um so you know i have a baseline now for putting this thing together um you know i won't get 200,000 miles out of this engine like i did before uh particularly because the cylinders are not in the greatest <laughs> shape as as you can see but i am putting in uh molly rings which um hopefully will will help that and again this is just uh temporary to get get me on the road and uh, in the meantime i can shop and look around and find the block and motor i want uh also do uh label all your pistons uh as well um, I label them both on um, the rods. Make sure the rod caps are, I don't know if you can see that number etched on there or not, but, um, um, so this is number five. Uh, if you turn it just right, you can, yeah, you can see the five, uh, on there. Make sure that they are, the flat sides are, flat sides are, touching each other and then the chamfered side the chamfered sides go here and then the flat um, goes in the middle where the two rods uh, will be up against uh, each other all right enough jibber jabber time to get this thing together Now here's what the uh, plastic gauge looks like. Um, it is just a long strip of calibrated wax, if there is such a thing, and apparently there is. Um, and then after you tighten the caps down and pull them back off, then you'll use this to compare and get a reading and, and get your clearance. Basically, the more it gets squished, the less the clearance, the more uh the less it's squished the more yeah did i say that right <laughs> the more it gets squished the fatter it is the less clearance that there is if it stays thin there's a lot of clearance um so here it is in place on the mains so I'm going to put the caps on, and again, this is dry. Uh, the oil just melts it because it's wax. Um, so realistically, you know, you could leave it in there, but again, you know, when I pull it apart to check it, then I just scrape it all off. Why add extra impurities in there when you don't have to? So uh, it's dry underneath, and we're going to be putting this together dry. Check the uh, how big it squishes out, and uh, go from there. And hopefully, it's not as bad as I think it might be. Still getting ready to do the plastic gauge check, but wanted to add in um, when you put the bearing caps in, um, kind of hook them on one side, and then with the bolts the bolts out um and holding it with i'm holding the camera with <laughs> with the uh with one hand so i can't show all of this um but you would kind of press down in the center while just giving a little a little tippy tap uh and it will just snap right into snap right into place on all of them so usually i just hook the opposite side and then um tap on tap on this side a little bit and boink it goes right down um if you're having to hit it hard there's something wrong stop um lightly coat um, the ends with oil and make sure you've got your uh your stud 
slash bolt uh, for the pickup that you're using and the correct orientation for uh, your oil pump and your application. I mean, it, um, it could be in different places on different engines. So just um, mock that up and be mindful of that. So I'm going to tighten these down now and um, then pop them back off and check the clearances. Well, the good news is 20 years and 200,000 miles later, the, um, the clearance, this is how this stuff works if you've never used it before, what you can see is one and a half thousandths point zero zero one five, or to be absolutely correct, zero point zero zero one five. Um, so you just match the scale up to whichever size. You can see it's not quite a thousand. Um, which would be super, super tight. And the limit on this is 0 0.015. So you can see the various sizes here. If it was like just three thousandths, this is inversely proportional. So the bigger the clearance, the less it squishes. So, and it matches up the same Uh, I mean, it's identical on on all of them, all the way down, all the way down. Let's see the glare. There we go. So. Now you see how that works. I'll go ahead and scrape it all off. I'm going to get some still pictures of it. Um, put the one-piece seal in. Uh, put assembly lube on everything. And then uh, tighten it down. I'll you tighten all the others. And then this guy last, the thrust bearing. Just want to check that um, back and forth. You kind of do a little set on it. And... Um, which honestly they say is kind of unnecessary. I always just check it just to make sure. And I check my uh, clearance, my end play with a feeler gauge since I don't have a dial indicator, but um, right in there. And that, cause that is that surface there and there is what holding the crankshaft from going in and out, which is uh, particularly... Uh, important a factor with a uh, manual transmission. You're putting a lot of force on that um, when you push on the clutch and such. So anyhow, that's that. Oh, and, uh, just for reference, here's my uh, 10th of April, 2002. Here's my clearances on I mean, and let's see, I had six thousandths uh, end play, I'll check that. And then we'll check the uh, rods and all the other stuff. I already know my <laughs> ring gap is uh, not that. That's what it is at the bottom of the cylinders. It's 25 at the tops with, um, so I'm curious to see what the side clearance is too. I'm expecting it, of course, to be much bigger because my ring gap at the top uh, on all the cylinders except number one where they had that ring failure is um, they're 25 number one is 28 Ooh, bad um, so uh, and it looks like this was my here's my rods notes so they were all point zero zero one five um, I'm kind of expecting those to be maybe like two thousands but we'll see we'll see soon enough so, yay. Well, after much wailing, gnashing, and grinding of teeth, I decided to go with the uh, anaerobic. Um, I'll see how how it is when, I, when it sets in there. Um, 
I've used RTV with two pieces where the seals join, you know, and I kind of stagger them so, you know, they sit, you know, high in one end and low in the other, but with this one piece, of course, it's not an issue. Um, and we don't have a slinger in here or anything, um, but, um, you know, there's a chance there could be an oil leak, you know, somewhere in here, so that's what I'm doing here just to seal that um, just to seal that edge um, right in between here and up and around um, the back side of the seal and uh, hopefully that'll work because I think this compresses um, and fills and then seals without air where the um, RTV um, I don't think compresses as well and then of course RTV has a habit of finding its way into everything so anyhow um, that's what I'm doing this is how that uh, anaerobic sealer looks when it gushes out um, so I'll get in there and wipe it out, wipe it clean, and then down, and trying to not make a shadow down in, down in there, because my panned end seal will go in there, and I'll definitely put some RTV down and down in there, and, you know, it squishes out the end of the block. The main thing is to, to seal kind of um, from this area to the back, you know, but not fill up where the, um, where the, uh, pan end seal will go. Double check, make sure that the gasket looks square all the way around the one piece gasket and, and it does. Um, let's see. And it, uh, seems to turn okay without binding or anything whoops get that out of the way so that's all nice and smooth and turns without a whole lot of whoops effort i was pushing on the front of the thing and the stand uh started to roll so yeah just feeling it by hand it feels pretty good so I'll work that around a few more times all right, well, today has been piston prep and hopefully install day. Uh, we'll see how far I get. Um, so all the rings are in their proper grooves. The top ring, which is the Molly ring, is um, in the top. Um, the second, I'm trying to see if I can find the... Um, Where's the dot? There's the, can you see the dot? Yeah. The dot is on the uh, second groove ring and um, I've got them spaced the way, uh, phased spaced the way they're supposed to be. Generally, it's like an inch and a quarter. I'm, I move them from the center front of the piston, uh, top one right off to where it lines up with that, the groove, and then that one there, and then do the same thing with the uh, oil rings. I put the, uh, where they join right in the middle, and then let's see, there's the top rail, and then the bottom rail is right there. So, uh, same thing, bearings are all installed and wiped down. These are the uh, friction coated skirts. Um, so, first time using these, so I'm curious to see how that does, especially since this 
poor old block is, um, you know, I didn't bore it. I just honed it out. This is just a refresh with uh, stuff I had around uh, as far as bearings and stuff and pistons and such. I traded this and that for this and that. So um, I went back and dressed this up a little bit. You can see there's still, I mean, I've got scratches and there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, again, this is just to hold me over and then I'll build a, uh, I'll build the motor of my dreams for this, which might even be a straight six since it's going in a truck. Um, anyhow, they're cleaned up, you know, I cleaned up this, this ridge. Um, the worst cylinder, number one, that had the, um the broken rings that broke into just fragments. Um, this one is 28 uh, end gap, uh, ring gap, uh, and then you just scoot down a little bit and then it's 18 all the way, all the way down. These are all like 25, 25 and 18 and these pistons call for um, uh, a 40% increase in ring gap, so it might accidentally work out okay. On the top, um, let's see if I can find the, find the paper here. Yeah, so it's a 40% uh, increase in ring end gap on the top. So basically, with a four-inch bore, it's twenty-two thousandths um, total. You add, um, you increase the gap by by six thousandths. But um, and you mach you know, you do your final hone based on the fact that these are like a thousandths uh, larger on the uh, on the skirt. So. Um, you know, I'm actually a little bit bigger on the top, um, but then you scoot down a little bit and it goes down to um, 18. So, um, I don't know. We'll just have to see what happens. There's nothing I can, there is nothing I can uh, do about that um, at this point in time. Um, had I you know, board it out, which I just didn't want to take this out to, out to 60. It was just extra cost, extra time. And I, honestly, I just don't have a lot of confidence in a 60,000, you know, you figure there's 30 <laughs> off of each side, you know, right here, man, that gets incredibly thin in, in between there. So anyhow, I'll start getting ready to um, get these pistons in. Okay, number one cylinder is poised and ready to go in. I set the crankshaft so it is at the, pretty much at the, uh, the bottom, um, as it comes down. Now, yes, I know, ideally I should have some rubber fuel line or something on there, but I've been doing this forever and um, I just kind of grab them as they come down and, you know, it's, I've never, ever, ever, ever nicked the crankshaft. But do as I say, don't do as I do. Um, especially if you've not done this before, put some tubing, rubber tubing on those rod bolts to help guide them over i just kind of hold it and guide it and tap it and use a wooden use something wooden on top wooden handle end something to uh tap that down and hold everything square now i can't do that and hold the camera so i will um show you it sitting in there next now remind you i'm also doing this dry right now because i'm going to put the plastic gauge 
on there so um, um, you know the oil would dissolve it so and I definitely want to check every single one of these uh, rod clearances so um, bearing clearances so all right time to get this piston in piston number one is down in the bore with the rod and bearing uh, right on the crankshaft again dry because we're going to um, check the um, clearances with plastic gauge so uh, I'll be flipping it over here uh, in a moment I might go ahead and actually put number five in while I'm at it and that way I can check both uh, one and five uh, at the same time, if I didn't say so before, you need to coat everything in oil. So the cylinder needs to be oiled up, the uh, ring compressor needs to be oiled up. You can't use too much oil, but at the price of the oil, you know, don't don't go like crazy. Don't have it pouring off every everywhere i'm gonna go ahead and get in number five and then plastic age um one and five uh, at the same time see how it goes did manage to get two pistons in and uh clearances look pretty good uh, and let's see here so where are we there we are one and a half thousands 0 0.0015 that's on number five and we should be doing the same thing here on number one and we are for uh, oil clearance 0.008 to 1 and a half. Build is coming along nicely. Uh, 1 and 5 and 2 and 6 are bolted in. As you can see under here, um, number 7 is in and waiting uh, to be plastic gauged as is it's opposing number three. Um, so almost, uh, almost done here. Uh, this is what I like to do. I just get the piston kind of seated there. Um, double check, make sure the, the rings are uh, phased and spaced base the way you want and that's another good last time to double check and make sure the dot is up on top uh on the second ring um in this in this case uh for these some aren't marked some are color coded some aren't marked with uh but they have a bevel to them on the portion that goes up against the inside of the piston so you just have to be careful and look at the uh, instructions but i uh, rest the piston in there then set the ring compressor down get it uh, squared up then take the um, uh, quarter inch drive holding it uh, i like to keep things at you know a, f a particular place whatever works best leverage wise so i've been keeping it pretty much at like 12 o'clock um and that way i know whether it's turned or twisted this way here uh the piston's dangling and kind of locked in place and the ring compressor you can hold with one hand while you tighten it down as opposed to doing it uh, outside of the block um it'll start to spin and then it might just grab one ring and not all of them and then your phasing it, it gets where the gaps are gets gets out of whack 
and you'll have to just undo it, start all over again. So, uh, and I say obviously from experience, tighten the uh, ring compressor till it just starts to snug. Then I'll grab up underneath on the uh, on the rod and kind of scooch it up a little bit, and that and while holding it, that allows me to scooch the compressor down to make sure that the oil rings are uh, good and compressed uh, while I finish tightening it. Um, then set it back down, get the alignment as good as possible facing front and watching the rod as you tap it down and guiding it so that it, um, you know, doesn't hit the, uh, doesn't hit the crank and that it isn't twisted and you know hits here hits there so it comes down uh nice and square so that will be next all right lower end is all back together so yay and it uh all seems to turn around and go 360 degrees without any kind of not feeling any binding or anything. 